Good day and welcome to the UFC on Fox, Johnson vs. Benavides 2 conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dave Rocket. Please go ahead. Well, first, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining today's conference call. For those of you who don't know me, this is Dave Lockett, the Director of Public Relations here at the UFC. As you know, um, we are on for uh, the UFC on Fox, Johnson versus Benavides to uh, conference call. Uh, the fight takes place this Saturday, December 14th at Sleep Train Arena in Sacramento. Um, Main card airs live on Fox at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, and uh, is preceded by prelims at, uh, on uh, Fox Sports 1 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time. Just a reminder to everyone that this is an invite-only conference call, and live streaming of this call is uh, prohibited. Uh, we are expecting an exciting weekend uh, and a lot of outstanding action in the octagon. Uh, today joining us, we have uh, UFC uh, flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson and a uh, number one ranked UFC flyweight contender Joseph Benavides. As you know, both men are coming off of impressive uh, victories and are, we're looking forward to a uh, you know a great fight in their uh, third uh, third meeting. Also joining us are uh, number two ranked. Dan Wake contenders Uriah Faber and number three ranked Dan Wake contenders Michael uh, McDonald and obviously both guys are it's a big fight for them as the winner stands to potentially be next in uh, line to uh, fight for the title. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and we'd like to open it up to your questions. Thank you. And if you would like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star one on your telephone keypad. If you're using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. We'll go to our first question from Ken Vishna with MMAWeekly.com. Hey, guys. Uh, my first question here is for Uriah. Um, Uriah, your camp uh, has had a lot of guys preparing at the same time for fights. You had Chris Holdsworth coming up for the Ultimate Fighter finale, and now you've got yourself, Chad, Joseph, Danny, all on this card. Uh, has that been a big positive for you guys, or is it difficult to manage the individual needs of every fighter so that every fighter gets exactly what he needs to prepare for his fight? Um, it hasn't been that difficult. You know, we have a lot of coaches on staff on our team. We have multiple guys for jiu-jitsu. We have multiple guys for striking. Wayne has come in as, as, a, as a head coach who kind of conducts things, but... You know, and he, and he and he's a hard worker, so he makes time for everyone. But we have structured classes that everyone can jump into. We have, uh, for example, Master Tong does a lot of mitt work for me, and uh, Gift does a lot of work for Joseph. And we have quite a few resources to go to for our guys. So I think it's all positive. You know, everybody's kind of working towards the same goal. And uh, the intensity level is there. Everyone's kind of... Um, Understanding, you have to take care of each other's bodies and things like that as well, so you're not getting too beat up. Except for TJ Dillashaw, he's a wild man. <laughs> but uh, I'm just joking. He, he does it right. But uh, you know, we're, we're basically uh, all trained anyway, so it's nice to have that focus all one time. And for you personally, um, you know, coming up, you you became kind of the the focal point for the WEC when that promotion was going strong. And you, you know, you kind of came up as this, as, uh, as the man in the sport at your division. And now Michael McDonald is kind of that young buck coming up in the division. And now you're the kind of the grizzled veteran kind of guy. Now, how does that sit with you to be on the opposite end of the spectrum now? I like it. You know, everything is about a mentality. You know, I've heard guys, Talk about how, you know, I've heard some really young guys talk like like they're old, like 29, 30 year olds be like, oh, I'm doing this and that. Like I feel young, man. I I look at some of my peers in this sport and some of the guys I looked up to, and just see what they accomplished from my age until what the age is now. And I don't necessarily want to be a guy that's fighting into my 40s, but I feel so good. My my skill level is definitely getting better. Um, I've been a guy who's always really been about health and, and healthy living, so I feel 120 percent. So I can just get my man strength, getting a couple of hairs on my chest. You have to uh, pop up every once in a while, you know. I'm, I'm a leg developer. 
And for Michael, um, you know, you you are kind of looked at as that kind of young up-and-comer kind of guy, but you actually have a lot of experience, and you present that really well in your comments usually um, when you do interviews and stuff. How is it for you to be perceived as that kind of up-and-comer, even though you have a wealth of experience and, and you've already fought for a title in your career in the UFC? I think it's kind of a blur, honestly. Um, yeah, you know, Every once in a while, I'll sit back and I'll look at where I am and kind of what's all happened ever since I turned pro at 16. That's over uh, six years, 22 now. Over these six years, I can look back and it just seems pretty crazy that it all happened at one point in time. You know, that, uh, yeah, I've already fought for a UFC title. Like, people who live their whole life, you know, just, just play for the Super Bowl. I've already done that and I don't really think about it. You know, just, it happened and, you know, it's, Things are going to keep happening and kind of become normal. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, guys. We'll take our next question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. Jay, obviously you fought Joseph, you know, a little over a year ago, uh, September in Toronto for the first ever flyaway title. Kind of talk to me a little bit about the differences for this fight. What do you remember about that moment, and, and what feels different going into the rematch? <laughs> um, you know, uh, it was a great fight in Toronto, and um, you know, predicting it's going to be another great fight in California. Um, other than that, you know, I feel that me and him have both improved over the year. Um, he's went on uh, put together some great fights, some great wins, and I've done the same. And, you know, it's just another fight. I'm going out there just to, you know, do my thing and move around and, and, and feel good and look good and help come with the victory. Is there a different level of confidence for you in this fight now that you are more of an established champion? Because the first fight, of course, was for the first ever title, so neither one of you were a champion going in. Do you have a, a different level of confidence or, or anything carrying into this fight? Because I know, again, that, that can help a, a champion, you know, having that, uh, you know, that mentality. Uh, for me, I don't really, you know training under that confidence. I just look at it. It's just another fight, you know, like regardless if, if the belt was on the line or not, I'm still going to fight exactly the same. You know, I train my butt off um, and I don't go in there like, oh, I beat him before. I'm the champion. Uh, this is going to be cake. Nah, I don't even care about all that. This is just another fight. And for Joseph, I'll kind of ask you the same thing. I know you've talked very openly about, you know, the, the things you did wrong in the last fight, but, but how do you feel in this one? And kind of compare it to that for me. Uh, you know, September last year versus now, how much different, how much better do you feel? I mean, is there a big difference in your mindset going into this one? Yeah, it's, uh, I pretty much did a total 180, and it, it wasn't as much changing a lot of things. It was just going back to pretty much how I fight every time, which, you know, I like to keep it laid back and happy and look at it as another day and just another way to assess my skills. But uh, for some reason, that first UFC title, you know, I kind of obsessed over and took in a little more, you know, emotion and everything uh, than I needed to. You know, it's already a fight. It's, it's pretty intense already. And you don't really need to add any extra stress and emotion and energy to it. So, uh, you know, that was one thing. You know, on the other hand, talking about, you know, all the, small, you know, technical, boring things that you can improve at. I mean, I got a new coach. You know, I also did a 180 in my training. You know, that's not something a fighter does, you know, every day, every year, you know. And, uh, you know, we got a brand new coach to come in and, and, and totally revamp the system. I think I've shown improvement, and you can see it, um, you know. Obviously, I've been working hard, but, you know, to, to change that's a pretty big thing. And, you know, the great thing about this sport is, is you get to go in there and, you uh, and test it and actually see it, you know, improve it out there in the ring. So, you know, I feel like I'm improved, and it's just another test for me to go out there and, uh, and see how much I've improved. Joseph, the last fight, I guess one of the biggest differences, it was a, a very close fight, a split decision, but I think if there was one difference to point to, it was, you know, Demetrius has such elusive feet and elusive skills, uh, you know, making people miss, basically, uh, without getting into game plan or strategy. I mean, is that something that you've looked at with him and, and, and a big difference in patience in this fight? Because, you know, Demetrius is one of those guys who's, who's amazing at just making guys miss. Oh, yeah, Demetrius is an amazing fighter all around. I mean, he's a world champion, uh, you know, stat technical weight class. You know, I don't think he gets enough credit, you know, pound for pound-wise, you know, being one of the best fighters. I mean, the things he does out there, you know, there's not many fighters that can do that. Um, you know, for me, it's great because the first time you go in there with Demetrius, I mean, he's the fastest fighter in the world and he moves like that. And like, you can mimic that as much as you want, but until you go in there, you know, you don't really know. And then you kind of adapt in the ring. Uh, thankfully, 
intentionally for me now. Um, I have been in there with him for 25 minutes. You know, I have a little better idea, you know, of his speed and movement where, you know, the first time you're in there, it's kind of, you know, you just you just go in there and, uh, and dive in head first. And a question for Uriah. Uh, Uriah, you fought every kind of fighter there is out there, from grapplers to wrestlers to strikers. Uh, you know, everyone knows Michael's, uh, you know, one of his biggest strengths is his punching power, his knockout power. Where would you rate him in terms of guys you fought in just that one realm, in just his punching power and knockout power? Is he the most dangerous guy, or have you faced guys similar to him, do you believe, in the past? You know, I think he might be the most dangerous guy. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, Jose Aldo actually is one guy that I would say is very, very dangerous super heavy kicks and super heavy punches and um but as far as is purely with the hands I, I gotta i gotta say michael's one of the most dangerous guys for sure and and uh you know i've faced i've faced a lot of guys with different disciplines and, and i kind of said that michael's one of the most one-dimensional guys i've fought in a long time and i don't necessarily mean he doesn't have the skill level but just from what i've seen he knows exactly where he wants to put the fight, and uh, and he's he's kind of done that time and time again. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, as, as far as danger with the hands go, he's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm excited to get in there and be challenged, and, and uh, have a, have a little have a little uh, danger angled in front of me. That's good for me. Last last question I'll ask you, right? Is that you've been critical in the past of a guy like Dominic Cruz, you know, joking and calling him the decisionator. Is a guy like Michael McDonald a much more dangerous opponent because he does bring that element, because he can finish this fight in one punch, one kick? I mean, is that different than even facing a guy like Dominic or even a Hayden Brown, who is a finisher? But I think you know what I mean when I ask that question. Yeah, no, yeah. And, I mean, that's why we're in this sport. And I'm the same way. I, if you look at my finish percentage, it, it's got to be one of the, the, the better – for someone who's been in the sport as long as I am, uh, I've got one of the highest finishing percentages, and I think McDonald's in the same boat, man. Submissions and, and knockouts. I mean, uh, the guy, the guy's uh, a force to reckon with. So, um, and it is a more dangerous fight. It's one thing to go in there and, and and try to win. It's another thing to know, like we're fighting. So, you know, this is a simulated death match, and we're both trying to we're both trying to get that 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 victory. So. Uh, it's going to be a good one, man. I'm excited. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll go to our next question from Randy Harris with WTAN Radio. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Uriah, talk about, uh, and I'm sure you've had to answer this question before, talk about uh, fighting at home, and is that an advantage or a disadvantage? <clears throat> you know, it's, it's definitely an advantage in a lot of ways. I mean, the, the energy, I'm a big guy on energy and, and, you know, positive energy and, and, you know, culmination of, of being in a place that's really comfortable and having a, a crowd that's going to be putting off some great vibes and, and having my whole team with me is going to be huge. Uh, and I, and I've, I've got a new, you know, as I've, as I've matured and gotten older and understand things a little bit better, I just realized how important it is to stay behind a community, you know, and, and, I feel like I've I've really become a part of this community on a on a bigger level. Although I've always been from here, um, you know, in the greater California area, just <clears throat> knowing that we're fighting for a lot of different things. You know, we're fighting for the pride of of an area. We're fighting for the economy. Um, you know, it was really cool to see everyone come together and save the king. So uh, I see this as as me and my guys doing our part and, and uh McDonald's part of that. He's a NorCal guy as well and um I've always I've always felt like the NorCal people in, in California in general get behind each other. So it's it's exciting time for me and I, I can't wait to be uh, walking out in that octagon with the crowd going nuts. Michael, if you can uh, kinda you know answer the same thing about, you know, fighting in, in the backyard and fighting basically, you know, it, it's a home game for you, Ryan. It's not exactly the way that I really think about it. Um, I don't really think about it so much at all. Honestly, no matter where I am, whether uh, I'm in England or you know Washington or San Jose or uh, no matter where I am, you know I really don't uh, look at the crowd. I don't think about the crowd. 
Um, I, I actually completely disconnect myself from everybody uh, before the fight. Afterwards, I'll go out and I'll enjoy it and stuff like that. But um, I, I just feel like I have something on my mind. You know, I'm 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 busy right now. I'm working, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll say hi to everybody. I'll I'll do all that kind of stuff later. Um, I don't really focus on that too much. The energy of people and um, you know how many fans I have at one you know place or another. To me, it's just about going out there and doing what I do and. I feel like when when I I would if I would rely on people then um, it just adds another X factor which I don't need um, you know whether it be a positive or a negative you know I don't want to go to Brazil and then people won't want to kill me and then I feel like oh my gosh you know now I'm like uh, I'm not I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling it you know the crowd hates me now it's in my head I'd rather just get it out of my head completely so it's not even a factor. Great, thanks for the time, guys, and best of luck. And as a reminder, if you have a question today, please press star 1. That is star 1 to ask a question. And we'll go to our next question from Adam Hill with Las Vegas Review Journal. Yeah, I want a question for uh, Demetrius and Joseph. Uh, obviously, the end, the other end of the spectrum with the uh, the heavyweight, but I want to get your take if you saw uh, the Hunt Bigfoot fight the other day and what you both thought of that fight. Hey, they both went at it. You know, I like Mark, Mark Hunt. Um, you know, watching him fight and taking all those shots already back when he fought in K1 and Pride, how he has a chin of Brandon. I remember when Krokop kicked him straight in the chin, he fell down and got a day count, got back up and went back after. So, um, it, it was a war and it was good to see. Um, it was a fun fight to watch. Yeah, I think that was definitely an awesome fight. You know, I'm a big fan of both. And, uh, you know, the way it's going out there and displays their heart and, and great determination is pretty amazing. You know, and, uh, you know, it was one of the best fights of the year, but you hear a lot of people say, like, one of the best heavyweight fights of the year. Like, if that happened, I feel, in a smaller division, it wouldn't necessarily be a great fight. You know, it's just it's just that much different, and that's, that's just crazy how, uh, you know, how the weight classes are so different. Like, if me and Demetrius did the same exact fight, you know, it wouldn't be uh, very different, you know. So it goes back to the kind of, like, you know, you, you get a big guy to fight, like, a small guy, and you know they're super dangerous, you know. But if you get a small guy, you know, fighting like a big guy, we're not we're not going to do very good. But uh, I think it was amazing, you know, great fight. Like I said, like they like Dana said after, like they deserved like every bonus. That was just that was something like you can't teach, you know, that the guys are made with. They went out there and just put it in. Uh, it was a great, you know, entertaining. But I don't think you're going to see that, you know, from from us. Right. And uh, this is last thing for for Joseph. What would a, what would a title mean to you? And and do you think it's an advantage to you that, that you don't have it and that you still have that hunger to get what Demetrius has? Yeah, I mean, it helps. You know, I have that extra motivation. You know, that's always a goal, you know, that, that's on my list that I haven't accomplished. Yeah, but, you know, even though he has accomplished it, I'm sure his, his goal is to defend it as well, you know, and he's defended it. You know, but, uh, you know, it means a lot to me. It's been, you know, mine, and, and I think everyone who starts in May, you know, that's their goal to be the champion. You know, at some point, you know, it's been mine for a long time. I fell short twice, and, you know, I keep telling myself third time's a charm, you know. So I think this is my time, and, you know, definitely, uh, it's definitely motivating to not get in it, you know, and have that little extra, you know, chip on my shoulder uh, that I need to get it. But at the same time, you know, I, I thought about that too much last time, and it's like it is really just another fight. You know, what's the difference? You know, I'm going there against another man. You know, he's my size. It's. It, it's it's really another fight, you know. It's another chance to test my skills, and you know that that's all it really is. So you know, it means a lot for me to uh, to make like my family and my friends and my team and everyone that supports me, you know, really proud. But for me, I'm gonna have to go and do the same thing, you know, next fight to you know five rounds, another countdown show. You know, nothing really changes. You got to train, you know, just as hard. So I think it's something I'm gonna be able to look back at and be like, wow, that's amazing. I was a UFC champ, but. You know, I think when I get it, you know, I'm going to be really excited to, to, to make everyone proud, and then it, it's kind of like back to work. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. We'll take our next question from Gareth Davies with Daily Telegraph. Good evening, gentlemen from London. I hope you're all well. It's lovely to uh, to hear you all, and uh, absolutely stoked for this weekend. I'm sorry I can't be there. Um, I wanted to ask a question, first of all, to the three team alpha male guys, obviously, um, you know, what does it mean to all three of you? Um, this year, you all seem to have had 
a real upshot in efficiency um, in your striking, both with hands and feet. Um, and, and, and first of all, to Joseph, do you think that could make the difference in your second meeting with Demetrius Johnson on Saturday night? Yeah, I definitely think, uh, you know, any improvement in skills can make a difference, you know, and, uh, and I think I've improved a lot. So, you know, that's something you're always going to go out there and, and, uh, and any improvement is going to be good. Cause, you know, I think from the last fight, and I think I've made those improvements that I need to, that I need to make, you know, close the gap technically where Demetrius is, is, is amazing. Um, so I think it's good. I mean, as far as the team, it's been, it's been an amazing year. You know, I've gone out and got three wins. I think Faber has three wins. Chad's on streak. He's not on the call, actually, but he's on the street to get a fifth knockout in a row, which would be actually uh, the UFC uh, record for uh, consecutive knockouts in a row with five in a row. I think he'd beat Harwin. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been an amazing year, and, you know, the way the way it's all happening and coming to an end here, with actually four of us fighting on the same card, we got Danny Castillo, you know, who's also undefeated this year and having a great year. Um, he's fighting as well, so... Just all four of us going in there, and, uh, you know, it seems somehow when we all fight on the same card, our game seemed to be elevated. And then, you know, just the fact that it's in Sacramento is crazy, and the amazing year is kind of coming to a head of this. And, you know, you can't really count on anything being meant to be, but everything's in place you know, to, to really make the year uh, put that exclamation point on it. Could I, could I ask um, Raya and, uh, and then Chad as well about the difference that perhaps Dwayne. Bang Ludwig has made in your, in your striking and your efficiency in this year? You know, you know, this whole sport's mental, and I think having having a coach that's really day-to-day putting together structured practices and bringing in a new system and stuff like that is has been giving the guys a lot of confidence. Um, I would say, you know, if I look back at a bunch of my fights, where my best striking was, it hasn't necessarily been my last three fights. I think maybe I had had a good show against Scotty Jorgensen, but um, I didn't do too much striking in the last, you know, the last fight or uh, against Menjivar. Ended up getting into a scramble situation. Both times, those guys took me down. Um, it wasn't me taking them down. So, um, you know, I still feel like I have some some stuff to show, and uh, and I and I I'm really just pumped to have someone who's kind of orchestrating the team a little bit better because we've had some great coaches throughout throughout the time throughout time and, and with the team and guys have, have been been real strong at some places and and not others but having Dwayne in there with his system and and the confidence of having somebody there you know orchestrating everything it helps a lot so um but yeah I, I feel like uh you can definitely see improvements and um, I'm excited for the for the fight to be able to showcase some of that, and also, you know, I, I've you know taken away too much from the, the the work that I've had before. You know, Master Kong should the time working mitts with me and and keeping that uh, the old technique fresh as well. So uh, I'm ready to go, and I don't think Chad's on the call. Oh, sorry, I can sorry, I didn't realize Chad wasn't uh, was there. Sorry, well, I don't know why I was thinking that. Just losing my mind as usual. Um, yeah, um, Chad's been a guy. Chad's been a guy that, uh, that we've all known has knockout power because we have to spar with him all the time for a long time. And it's just been a matter of him placing his punches and his strikes, and, and now he's able to do that. So it's gonna keep coming, man. They always say that a busy fighter is also a happy fighter because it means he's a healthy fighter. And I wanted to ask Joseph. It's your fourth fight, I think in 2013, and it's the first time since 2008 you've had four fights in a year. Does that make, is that momentum making a difference for you this year as well? Man, is that why I'm so happy? Like, it makes sense now. Like, when I woke up this morning, everyone's like, obviously I go in the gym and everybody's like, everyone's like, how you feeling? Because, you know, it's fight week, and like, the first thing that comes to mind is like, I'm happy. You know, like, I'm just happy it's finally here. And like I said earlier, it's just been a amazing year and everything's like, you know, right right there, just, you know, put put there to, to have it been better here and, and do this. So I am happy, you know, the last two fights, the last two years, I've actually only had two fights, you know, um, with the flyweight tournament, the draw, I had to sit out for a while and, 
you know, I don't think that helped me any, you know, just sitting there and waiting. And then I think the year before when we waited for the flyweight division to start, you know, but this year, like, everything's great. You know, it's been a great year for me, you know, personally, um, professionally. And I'm a better person and a better fighter, you know, when I am happy. And uh, that's a big difference from last camp. Like, I, I talked about just bringing in too much emotion and taking it too serious. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's a, it's another fight, you know, and it's, it's not life or death. You know, that's how I treat it. But, you know, when I'm happy and I'm relaxed, you know, that's when I find my best. So, you know, I know the difference in this fight, you know, obviously you can't control the result, but, the result, but I know I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight good. You know, I'm going to fight happy and I'm, I'm going to fight a good fight. So I know it's going to be ultra competitive, and, uh, but, you know, nothing is going to match like the disappointment I felt of the last one because it's built up so much. You know, I know what that feels like. And, uh, you know, I just know this one I'm going to go out and fight good because I, I feel that great. The discipline was bound to be there, of course, because it was a, um, a split decision. Can I ask what? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Can I ask one question of Demetrius if he's still there as well? I'm here. <laughs> Demetrius, hello. I've got this picture of you all sitting on four chairs together. I don't know why, but you're probably not in the same place. Um, Demetrius, I want to ask, um, as the guys just mentioned, as Team Alpha Male just mentioned, there's four of their team on the card. You're going to Sacramento. It's their turf. Are you the kind of fighter who responds uh, uh, going into the lion's den, into someone else's backyard, and does that actually get more out of you? Um, you know, it doesn't really bother me at all. So, you know, like I, I fought, you know, all around the world, and I've been booed and I've been cheered for, so it doesn't really bother me. You know, it's just another fight, and at the end of the day, you know, whether I would or lose the fight, the same thing's going to happen with all the time my family and get back in the gym and get ready for our next fight, whether it's a title fight or not. So, it doesn't bother me. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Stay healthy. And we'll take our next question from Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. Hello, and thank you for the time. Uh, my first question is for Uriah. Seeing how um, you've had the winning streak that you have as, as of late, uh, if you can actually win this fight, where do you see yourself lining up for another title shot? Um, well, I I, I would think I'd be next, but you never really know. I mean, I, I've been ranked as the number one contender, aside from the two champions, um, my last three fights. And I, and I really feel like, you know, where Michael's come in, he's he's right there as well. I mean, we haven't fought each other, so we're both kind of sitting in that same position. Um, and, you know, looking at, looking at Burrell and, and Dominic, there's a lot of guys that they haven't fought division, you know, especially Cruz because he's been out for two years. I mean, there's a lot of questionable guys, guys like uh, Rafael Tunso and guys like Eddie Wyman and, and Michael McDonald and, um, uh, and uh, so it's, there's a lot of things that we haven't seen him do and, and, and myself, I've been doing whatever, whatever they've asked I've been, I've been fighting. Michael's been doing the same thing. And I feel like right now it's kind of a no-brainer, but um, I, I, I think that that's not my decision to make, so I'll just do my part and, and let everything else fall into place. We all know the rivalry that you've had with Dominic over the years. Seeing him come back and having that fight with Hanen set up, uh, and that's coming up here, what are your thoughts on their fight? And does it set an extra fire under you seeing him back? No, contrary to proper belief, I I really couldn't care less about <laughs> the whole rivalry. I enjoy having at least one rivalry because I'm buddies with most other guys in in the in the fight game. So uh, you know, I like Michael McDonald. I like Eddie Wyman, and Hoffel Sunsau, and and Ivan Mitchell. Um, you know, all, all these guys I've fought have all been have all been good guys. Scotty Jorgensen's a good buddy of mine. So I enjoy having someone that I can I can <laughs> you know, have a little bit more fire, but I don't waste time thinking about him. And, and I all I've been thinking about is my fight with Michael McDonald, you know, the one that's up right now. But uh, I'm excited for Cruz, and I I think people put too much emphasis on body parts. You know, this fight this fight game is not about body parts; it's about the mind. And Dominic's got the mind of a champion, so 
Uh, it's not going to come down to whether his knee holds up, in my opinion. I think it's going to be whether his mental game is, is where it needs to be. And, and uh, I have confidence in that, but I'm curious to see who's the better fighter, and we're going to find out. Him or Burrell. Thank you. And for Michael McDonald, this is probably by far, in your eyes, maybe the biggest fight of your career. Uh, when you were basically starting your professional career, Faber was the WEC champ. What does that mean for you to fight uh, maybe somebody that you had been looking up to when you were beginning your career? Uh, I, I usually only look up to people who I, I see something in particular that I want to do. Um, Uriah has a very different fighting style than I do. Um, so it, it wasn't exactly someone that I that I watched as a kid and be like, oh, I want to be Uriah fight Uriah Faber because I fight different. I wanted to fight different. Um, there's people like uh, very very few fighters actually that I looked up to. Um, one is like Oz Rudin because I wanted to fight like him. Um, but it, it's not so much about me being starstruck with Uriah now I have to fight him or anything like that. It would I, I kind of um, from a young age, I kind of looked at all of my my people in in, in the division, and uh, you know, just, just looked at them as competition. Uh, even from a, a young age, um, when I was 16, I saw Miguel Torres fight. Uh, no, I wasn't. I don't even think I was 15. I think I was like 15 or something like that. And I, I saw Miguel Torres fight Manny Pacquiao, and right away I said, "I'm I'm better than both of those guys. I want to fight them." You know, and I got to do that. Um, but I think early on, I, I got to see everybody at a competition as soon as the WEC was around. And uh, by the time the WEC was televised, I was already fighting professionally or amateur. Um, and and I, I was looking at them in, in that way. So it's not, it's not too crazy for me. Thank you. And for Joseph Benavides, in what ways has having the extra couple of weeks here helped you out, being that the two of you were supposed to fight at the Ultimate Fighter finale as the main event? But now it's in Sacramento. So has having that extra two weeks really helped you? You know what? It actually has. I mean, I don't think, you know, there's a rare, there's a rare case where you have your, your fight move back and be happy about it. But I think this was it. You know, this is a card I wanted to fight on since the beginning. And I feel so good, you know, physically. It's like, I was like, I think I'm going to start pretending all my fights are two weeks before they actually are. <laughs> like, just because I feel that I didn't have an extra two weeks. So I'm going to kind of think I'm going to start pretending to do that. Um, but yeah, you know, this is where I wanted to fight, you know, never fought in Sacramento. You know, I wanted to fight. Uh, obviously it was great. You know, Chris Holder mm -hmm. had, had the finale and we were training together, but you know, that was his night. Now we all get to go out there, you know, the four of us and, and do it together in Sacramento which is pretty special for me, you know, like, uh, like my life has pretty much changed in Sacramento. The first time I ever went to a UFC, I went to the Arco Sleep Train Arena with a buddy of mine, and it was over seven years ago when I met Uriah, and I was sitting in the nosebleeds eating hot dogs, uh, watching George St. Pierre win the world title against like Matt Hughes, like, never in my wildest dreams if someone would have tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, seven years later, you know, you're going to be uh, down there doing the same thing. I would have been like, get out of here. You're, you're nuts, you know. But uh, so it's pretty crazy, you know, just to see, you know, how far I've came and everything and just being able to fight at home, being able to fight with all your buddies, being able to join the party. It's like all four of us are, are, are waking up and, you know, like, oh, some dudes want to fight us. Like, let's, let's go over here like you used to back in the day or something. So, you know, it, it's just pretty awesome to do. And, uh, you know, I think, like I said, you know, everything's put in place uh to have it, but that's not something obviously you, you count on, you know, I and mean, I learned that from the last fight. It's something you gotta go out there and do, but you know, it definitely gives me that extra, you know, motivation and uh and inspiration and, and excitement I need. Thank you. And my last question is for the champ here, Demetrius Johnson. Being that we've seen the flyweight division nearly double in the last few months here and over the course of the past year, uh, what are your thoughts on the growth of the, excuse me, the division and the talent of uh, the fighters that are coming into it? Um, I think it's good. You know, like you said, it is doubled and, you know, we're getting great uh, talent out there. You know, Zach Wachowski's on the card. I mean, on our on our card coming up, and you know, Josh Campbell just fight, Andy Bennett just fight. I um, mean, you still have you know the dangerous guys like John Dotson in the division. I mean, this this division is just uh, stacked, and you know, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you.
We'll go to our next question from Damon Martin with FoxSports.com. Uh, yeah, our follow-up question for Demetrius. Uh, you know, Demetrius, so far in 2013, you've had two title fights. This will be your third. Uh, rarely does a champion fight three times in a year. You actually have to deal with a little bit of an injury as well this year. So, I mean, could you could you just kind of kind of put this year in retrospect for you and, and how big this win would be in terms of capping off what would be a pretty incredible 2013 for you? Um, it'll be fantastic. You know, last time I checked, you know, um, I fight to make a living and provide for my family. And, you know, as long as my body is healthy, um, I'm going to keep on fighting. And, you know, regardless if I'm, a, if I'm a champion or not, I want to be active as possible as long as my body will let me. So, like I said, you know, people come over to my house, like, oh, man, where's the belt? And I was like, I have no idea. I was like, I don't even look at the thing. I don't even care about it. Like, I'm just here to fight and make money and take care of my family. So, at the end of the day, um, if I if I win this fight against Joseph, it's a successful uh such a 13, and even if I lose, I still look at it as a successful 2013. You know, my, my family's happy, my baby's good, and I'm a happy man. Do you think that mentality is, is a little different and maybe even helps you in a fight? Because, you know, again, we talk about the title all the time, and obviously I'm sure you're proud to be champion, but the fact that you're talking about, you know, just kind of putting it away and not focusing on it, I mean, do you think that actually helps you in a way that you're not, you know, you're, you're not focused so much on being the best. You just go out there and, and, and get to be the best. Um, I think so. I mean, a lot of people might look at it different, you know, um, like, you know, I don't care about the title, but in reality, I mean, I, I tell everybody that, you know, yes, I'm the champion now, but eventually I'm never, the belt's going to be taken away from me. I know that. I know that's going to happen. So as long as I can, you know, cope with that and accept that, then, you know, it's, it's, a, it's not a big deal. So I just go out there and train my butt off of the gym and, you know, and mop the floor and, and still get beat up by Matt and my other coaches and, when it's time to fight, I go out and fight, and after the fight's done, I say thank you to everybody, and I go home and, you know, become a father. And that's how I, that's how I live, and that's how I fight. And, and a question for Joseph, kind of follow-up to that. You you talked about, you know, kind of obsessing about the title. Hearing Demetrius say that, is that is that a similar kind of mindset you've adapted in terms of how you approach title fights now? You know, <clears throat> It really is. You know, I remember when I was obsessed about it and I heard him kind of talking like that. I'm just like, what? Like, that doesn't mean, like, I, I, I didn't get it. But in reality, when I look back, like I said, it, it wasn't something I changed. Like, I was like that in all my fights before that. I mean, I remember even my cruise fight, it wasn't anything crazy to me, you know? And, like, even after the fight, you know, I lost to Demetrius. But when I was done, I... I felt good about the fight. Like, obviously, I lost, and that was a little bit of a bummer. But I felt good because it was just another fight, and it was like something I went out, and I fought good, like I kind of said earlier. Like, I felt like I went, and, and I fought good, and I did what I had to do, and I had fun doing it. Like, the other fight, it wasn't fun because of, like, the obsession and the emotion. Like, even, you know, once the other judge would have given it to me, I would have had that initial feeling of, like, man, that was, like, not good. So, you know, it wasn't fun, so... You know, I think it is a good, a good thing to adapt. And uh, you know, I kind of saw it last time, but it was it was something I think I always had. I just I, I switched up for that one fight, and uh, you know, it really didn't work for me. And that was a big wake up call. You know, just realizing like, man, like I lost, and I thought it was life or death, and it's not. Like, you know, like I'm still alive. Like my life's pretty cool. I'm doing what I like to do for a living. You know. I saw my family and my girlfriend and my team and everyone still loved me and I got to eat good food and had people supporting me and treating me. It was like nothing really changed and you know it's that it's it's that much easier to know that you know like when you've been down down there and you felt that that you know nothing else is gonna really shake you you know and uh, you know that I can go in you know without the fear without the, the fear. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll take our Good next. Matata. Question from Ken Fishna with MMAweekly.com. Hey, I've got a question here for Demetrius and Joseph. Um, when you guys fought the first time, it, it ended in a split decision, and I think when that happens, almost everybody's kind of like, well, we could do a rematch pretty quickly. What do you guys both think as far as that goes? Is it better for you both um, as fighters and maybe even as for the development of the flyweight division to have gone out and fought a few other people first before you had that rematch? And can we start with Demetrius? It was a good fight for me. Um, and still getting used to fighting at 125 and then fighting John Dotson, you know, I think, 
you know, in the in the flyweight division. I still I believe he is probably the the, the hardest puncher who has the most power in the division. Um, I think athletic ability, you know, he he's probably beyond my athletic ability. And for me to have that high round war with him and you know get dropped twice and be able to get back up my feet and keep on pushing the fight and get him in the clinch and just have that you know high round grind fight and have to push and work for work for the win um, made me uh, pretty happy. It's like okay, you know I'm not getting handed these fights. I'm not these guys are tough. I think you know the John Moraga fight, you know I felt really good. You know it was my first time fighting on the uh, uh, West Coast and uh, fighting you know, stay on my own time zone. I felt really good that fight. And, uh, you know, now here we are, and I'm doing the fight Joseph again, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it was a, it was a great thing that we waited. Um, you know, we both got fights in between. You know, um, as far as the fight goes and the technical aspect, I mean, it really helps. You know, I get to go see Demetrius fight two more times. I mean, he fought five rounds, you know, both fights. That's a long time. I get to watch him and my coaches and team get to study him. He had great fights, you know, where you can see, you know, what works and, and kind of what doesn't on him. So mm-hmm. that was great for me. And then on my side, it also helps me that I got to go out there and fight three guys, you know, three top rank guys, Ian McCall, who, you know, we forget is one of the toughest guys in the division. I had two great fights with the champion. Um, I get to go in there with him and then, you know, two other, um, you know, ranked guys, solid, solid guys. And, you know, you, you really improve anytime you, you go in there and, and do the actual fight. You know, practice is one thing, training is one thing, but I feel you always improve on the fights. And, you know, the fact that I've had three, you know, really helped. And, um, I remember when the fight was over and if anyone remembers, you know, after even like my McCall fight or my Uyano Yama fight, like, I was hesitant to take the title. Like, I knew I wanted to fight more. I knew I had a lot of improvement to do at that moment. Dwayne Ludwig had really just joined camp, and I felt my improvements going. I didn't want to rush anything, and I didn't want to make any, like, mistake I made at 135, fighting dominant Cruz twice, you know, so fast, and then kind of being stuck in, like, uh, trying to, and then being stuck in a position no matter what I did. So, you know, I learned from that. I thought it was good for the division to develop. You know, every name we fought is now, you know, another name. You know, and people know, and the division's going great. You know, um, a lot more names coming in, like you guys mentioned earlier. So I think it was only good things, and, you know, it built up. You know, and now we're both, you know, the best fighters we have been, you know, uh, at this point. You know, I know I feel better than I've ever felt. You know, Demetrius is already a great established champion, so... I think this is the the way it was supposed to happen. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good luck on your fights. Thank you. And that does conclude our question and answer session. At this time, I would like to turn the call back over to Dave Lockett. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, participating in today's uh, conference call. Just a reminder that uh, this Thursday, December 12th at 1 p.m., uh, the UFC and Fox Press Conference will take place at Sleep Train Arena. Then on Friday, December 13th at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Time, we will hold weigh-ins again at uh, Sleep Train Arena. We look forward to seeing uh, those of you who can make it uh, out there. And um, thank you again for uh, attending today's call. And uh, this concludes the uh, conference call. All right. Okay, Take it easy, bro. Take it easy, guys. See you guys tomorrow. Wish me to make.